Hey gang, Rod Cumberland of the East Coast Lumberjack. And the last little while we've done a, a series of videos on the best hardwood to make axe handles out of. And uh, I've done a whole series on, uh, a four part series on the different strengths and uh, properties of the hardwoods and uh, what makes a better handle for whatever the application is, whether you're actually striking another object or whether you don't have to worry about that. and. And uh, so this video here, I want to do a follow-up because um, there was a lot of time. The first time I started talking about what, the wood that was best, um, somebody mentioned yellow birch. Said, "Hey, how about yellow birch?" Now, uh, in where I'm at, I'm actually in eastern Canada, New Brunswick, and it's uh, we're way out on the east coast. Uh, we have what's called a boreal, uh, the boreal forest is to the north of us. We're actually in Acadian forest. And one of the most common species here in New Brunswick is actually yellow birch. It's a, it's a tolerant hardwood species. It, it, you find it a lot on, on hardwood ridges. So where we get a lot of sugar maple or what people call rock or hard maple, uh, sugar maple and, and yellow birch are pretty common on these areas. And also uh, hemlock would grow on these, on these slopes. So yellow birch is a very common uh, species here in New Brunswick. And it's also, it has high heat value. So when you're buying your winter wood um, in New Brunswick, we like to get a little bit of beech because beech has really high heat value, probably one of the highest in the province. Um, sugar maple is right there with it, a little bit below, and then of course yellow birch is right there as well. So in the birch family, the uh, Betula family, there's a number of different uh, birches that we have. Um, one's called a gray birch or a wire birch, and usually when you, you can tell them from the other birches because they have really wiry branches, so they don't have a lot of big branches coming off it. Usually it's just a, a number of smaller branches and then it gets really wiry, so, and they're a pain in the butt to limb. So, uh, and gray birch don't grow that large. Like usually a gray birch, if you get a 10 inch gray birch, that's a fairly large tree. So they, they have a very fairly short lifespan, uh, gray birch. They don't grow that fast and they're very wiry and so they're not much of a tree. Um, not bad for heating with, but uh, again, their heat value is not the greatest. Then of course the most common birch we have is white birch and white birch or paper birch is the one that is famous for uh, that uh, the First Nations people used to make their birch bark canoes out of years and years ago and uh, of course when you've got a large birch tree like that you can peel it off. We, we've used birch trees in the past like when we're out in the working in the woods in the wintertime you want to start a fire at, uh, at lunch to, to uh, heat up your coffee or boil the kettle. Um, we take some of that birch bark off the side of the tree and, and use that, uh, you know, to start your fire with because it, it burns very readily. Um, so that's white birch. White birch here in New Brunswick grows, uh, you know, a lot larger than the gray birch, obviously. Um, and, and we get some white birch that are, you know, 100 plus years old and they're actually a, a sizable tree. Um, but that's, that's white birch and they're fairly... Uh, they're fairly common. Again, they're an early successional species. They grow fairly rapidly, occupy the site very early. And they don't grow, again, 100 years old is an old birch in, in this neck of the woods. Um, they, have, they have trouble. We actually have a disease here called birch dieback. And if you cut trees around a birch, a lot of times when people are clearing lots, they like the look of a white birch on the front lawn, but they don't realize when they clear everything else around it, the birch trees will die. It's called a birch dieback. And we don't I'm not sure 100% why that is, but they're, they're prone to that. Now, yellow birch, even though these other two are what we call a fairly, you know, weak or, you know, they're not that great of a tree, don't have high heat value, yellow birch is very particular. And I'll tell you a few neat things about, uh, about yellow birch because, of course, I'm a forester and, and uh, you know, you learn these things over the, the years you spend running around the woods. But uh, yellow birch is a really neat species. Um, number one, it has a, a wintry green smell. Or taste to it. So uh, if you, you want to uh, show the kids something neat, take them out, find a yellow birch, and just snap off a twig and, and crush it up a little bit and let them smell it. It's got a wintergreen smell to it. So it's very characteristic. It's one of the species you can actually tell by smell. Uh, and the hickory is another one like that, obviously, as well. Um, but it also, it's, it's a denser wood than the yellow birch, and it's, uh, it makes really good firewood. It has higher heat value, more BTUs per pound. And, uh, and of course, that's how I've always known yellow birch. Usually they're fairly gnarly and they're, and they're tough as the devil to split. Like splitting white birch when, when that's in the wood pile, that's not tough to split and I can get through that stuff really slick. Um, yellow birch is a different story, especially if you let it sit for a while. If it's green, it splits not bad. But if you let yellow birch sit for any length of time at all, splitting that is just a nightmare. 
So, and the other thing with it, it grows fairly gnarly. Like they're very branchy in New Brunswick and it's hard to find a really nice straight yellow birch. Like we don't see that a lot. Our yellow birch branch a lot and, uh, and again, they're fairly gnarly wood. So when somebody mentioned, hey, yellow birch makes a good axe handle, the first thing I thought is, are you kidding me? Yellow birch is an ugly, well, it's a, it's a nice tree, but usually the wood is fairly ugly. Um, you know, nasty. It's got curls and, and uh, gnarls and lots of stuff happening in it. Um, our birches in, in eastern Canada are also quite renowned for growing uh, uh, the, uh, <laughs> no, I can't remember what it is. Um, Ch Chaga. Chaga is, uh, is what you find growing on yellow birch and white birch here. So Chaga is apparently a remarkable uh, product. It's, it's basically a fungus or a growth. It's, a, it's a, a growth on the tree, like a fungal growth, and it's black, and, uh, and it gets hard. And uh, apparently it has unbelievable uh, car uh, non-carcinogenic uh, properties, like to help with fighting cancer and stuff. So people, it's become a real rage here that, you know, people finding Chaga and drying it out and using it, drinking it every day. So... Anyways, really neat medicinal purposes to that. You look that up. We could do another video about that sometime when I actually have done some research and can speak intelligently about it. Um, but anyhow, back to yellow birch. So, so when somebody mentioned yellow birch to me, I've, I now in all honesty, I've never made a yellow birch handle. So all I could think about was my days in the woodpile splitting yellow birch thinking, man, it may make a good handle, but I'm not going to be the guy splitting it, I'll tell you that. Um, so anyways, but, but when they mentioned that, um, of course I, it was a, one of, uh, the video was one of, of the four part series. So I mentioned that I think in the first or second, uh, segment and somebody mentioned yellow birch and I thought, man, are you, are you serious? Yellow birch? Well, then when I got, of course, before I got to the, uh, the third section, the third section was all about the different properties and how the different species lined up. Well, when I started going through that, and of course I had that in the back of my mind, how's yellow birch stacking up? I was amazed. Let me take you through some of that. So I have, I have that, uh, that list of properties here and where yellow birch fits. So of course, we all know that when we looked at that, hickory was by far the best species, okay? It, it excelled in almost all these. It had the highest specific gravity, the highest modulus of rupture, the highest shock absorption, uh, the highest compression strength, the highest shear strength. Like hickory wood is just an amazing wood. And, uh, and I really, again, it, it doesn't grow here in New Brunswick. It only comes about as far north on the east coast as about New Hampshire. So whenever I get it, I have to travel quite a ways to get hickory, and I've been doing that the last uh, six or seven years. But it is, and the more I use it, the more amazed I am at hickory. Like, it, it's tough. Even the bark is tough. You know, I've cut myself on hickory bark. <laughs> I mean, typically I can cut myself with a spoon. Uh, being a lumberjack and stuff, I'm renowned for... All my cuts and, and I'll, maybe I'll do a video someday of all the injuries I've had over the years. Um, and of course, it got so bad that actually lately I stitched myself up. It's just, it's a lot faster. It saves the healthcare system. And actually, once you cut yourself, I'm not sure whether you know this or not, but your body releases endorphins at the site. So for about five minutes after you have a cut, it, it, it's fairly numb. So you can actually get in there and stitch it up if you're at it pretty quickly. So make sure you sterilize everything. Um, and no, I'm not a doctor, but anyhow, um, so let's look at these uh, factors, these um, measures of how tough or strong or elastic uh, trees are, different hardwood species, and see where yellow birch falls out. So specific gravity, uh, again, hickory's number one at uh, 0.72, and then there's a lot of the hardwoods that, uh, that are fairly close to that, so uh, underneath there is, of course, uh, oak is 0.68, so not too far under it. Um, beech, 0.64. Um, maple, 0.63. Yellow birch, 0.62. So hardness, it's up there. It's, you know, it's in the bottom of that clump of, uh, of hardwoods right underneath hickory. And the neat thing is hickory is really hard. And it's a, a ring porous hardwood. So I would have thought that actually the diffuse porous hardwoods that are more dense wood would actually rate higher than hickory, but it doesn't. Hickory is a very dense wood. Modulus of rupture, hickory 139, but actually in place number two for modulus of rupture was yellow birch with the 114. Ash was 103, oak 105. So actually it's, it's not a bad number, uh, second place in the modulus of rupture. Shock absorption, uh, first was hickory uh, 14,900, 
Number two, 13,900 yellow birch. And again, I was surprised. It's actually higher than white ash at 12,000. Compression strength. Number one, hickory, 178, so way out front. Um, number two, yellow birch, 143. And again, white ash, 115. So all of a sudden now when we've looked at these ones, actually yellow birch is ranking ahead of, of uh, white ash. Um, impact bending. Number one, hickory with uh, 1,700. Second place with 1,400 yellow birch. Uh, white ash, uh, 1,090. So again, it's, it's looking pretty good. Elasticity. And actually, elasticity, I looked at two different publications. Um, in one of them, white ash ranked ahead of yellow birch. But in this one here I have, um, hickory was uh, first with 14.9. 14 Not far behind at 13.8, yellow birch. White ash was 12. Um, I've done compression, crushing. Um, first was uh, hickory, 63.5. Second, yellow birch, 53.1. So when I started looking at all these, I thought, you know, not all the time, but fairly consistency in second place behind hickory and ahead of white ash, and, I, and I'm a diehard white ash lover, was yellow birch. And it really amazed me. So... Anyhow, I said, well, obviously, you know, these numbers don't lie. They're showing that yellow birch has, some, even though it's a diffuse porous hardwood, it has properties that are pretty flippin' impressive when it comes to handle wood. So, of course, the real test was, how's this stuff split? Because, and I, I, I said that in my last video, I said, well, if, uh, if you could split it out, it might make good handle wood. So, as you know, I'm right in the middle of splitting all my, uh, ash and hickory and and stuff out. I, I brought uh, I'm almost I'm two-thirds of the way done my hickory right now So let's, let's go for a little while <laughs> So what did I do? Of course, I said well, we need a sample We need to get a sample of yellow birch and uh, and I can show everybody how ugly it splits so we're gonna go outside the shop here and uh, Go to where I'm splitting all my wood Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's my dad's old trailer. That's a it's a pretty neat old rig. I got the lights, <laughs> I got the lights working on that. He always said that the you, your lights all hook up differently on all different trailers, and I said no, only yours. So I had to uh, rewire this one here so it would actually match my truck. But it's a good little trailer. So I've been getting all my I've been getting all my wood on that. You can see there's a couple of bolts of ash still left on that one. Um, but here's what I'm splitting out here now. Now this here is a nice man beautiful hickory So I'm into some really nice stuff now. I've only got uh, what's left out there four logs left to split out So this one here is one of the last ones and again This is the for you people that like splitting hickory uh, as I mentioned before when you have just that inch of white sapwood around the or uh, sapwood around the outside of a tree on hickory logs it splits it's not the greatest of wood uh, it splits a little bit harder and it doesn't always split straight so, and, and actually somebody posted another good thing on uh, Axe Junkies the other day and we're talking about pecan hickory. So I thought maybe that's a pecan hickory. But I looked at it and no, it doesn't have, it's, it, it is very ring porous it, and it's uh, very, uh, it's not gradual rings uh, porous throughout the uh, wood. It's very uh, distinct in the first uh, layer of uh, early wood. So it is a true hickory, but I'm just not sure what kind it is. It's not pig nut and it's not shag bark. Um, so anyways, I got to do a little bit of work on, on my hickories, but this one here um, This one I think might be a, a pig nut because it does it has a lot wider ring here You can see it's got about two two and a half inches of uh, sapwood and it splits out really nice, but look right here beside it <laughs> So I, I uh, I've got a good friends my, my son's married to a, a good clan the buds up in uh, the back and uh, He's got about a thousand acres of woodland beautiful stuff up there beautiful wood and I usually cut my fire with him every winter so I told the guys, I said, can you find me a little bit of uh, yellow birch and bring it down? I want to try splitting it out because I thought I'll show you guys how ugly it splits. Well, look at this. <laughs> You're never too old to learn. So this yellow birch, and, and again, you, you've got to look to find a, uh, this was in our, our log pile. But look how straight this thing's splitting out. And I've got some bolts here. Let me just swing it around here. Here's my bolts. So this is a yellow birch bolt. And you can see, not too bad, actually it split fairly straight. I was quite surprised at, at how well it, it split out. Now this one here shows a little bit more about birch. Like birch, you can see it's, uh, it's split here a little bit angular. Yellow birch, and of course most of the woods here that we 
we're lumberjacks, so we chop wood and we'll chop anything. <laughs> so if you want to train and become a better chopper, actually the harder the wood you chop, um, the better you'll get. So we normally practice out back. Uh, we were out back today at our training deck and I'm going to start doing some uh, videos on that here in a bit and explain to people how to, how to you know, we, we, we compete professionally, we chop professionally. There's our training deck out back of the car there. You can see we put a, a deck on it last year because I don't like the sun much. So uh, we, we chop mostly poplar. That's what we did today. The boys were down to, uh, to train. Um, but if we get a, if we get something else like you know there's birch is fairly common like I said and uh, and we'll chop it now popple is fairly soft when it comes to chopping and if you look at all of our our modulus of elasticity and and strength and all that you'll see that popple is really low on the list because it is a it's a soft hardwood um, but the other hardwoods actually when you when you chop them you'll find that uh, your axe works a lot different depending on the species of wood you're chopping and birch is what we call chippy. So it, uh, your axe doesn't sink nearly as deep in it, but it chips out pretty nice. And of course, that's what I found with this splitting this wood out, is it's uh, what I, it's kind of, it's not brittle, but it's, uh, it just doesn't split. Well, I guess it is a little bit brittle. I guess that's the word I'd probably use for it. It's a little bit on the brittle side. So hickory holds really tightly together, and as I'm splitting that stuff down, it holds really tightly and it comes apart. And sometimes you have to just drive two or three wedges in to get it apart. There's a lot of my handle wood there that's, that's splitting out and it's nice and straight. But this yellow birch, I was surprised it fit, it split fairly straight. And, um, and even when I went down uh, with the grain, it come out, it come apart fairly decent. So anyways, I, I've got about uh, a half a dozen yellow birch bolts here now, and I'm gonna turn out a few handles in the shop and uh, and try one and see how it works. So, anyways, on yellow birch, um, you need to look for straight logs. Okay, so if you and, and usually you can tell on the outside bark, it's nice and smooth and straight. Um, so you you want to stay towards the bottom of the tree. Once you get up high at all in yellow birch, it gets quite limmy. And if you get a nice clean bolt, the other thing you want to do is make sure you get your yellow birch quickly, because yellow birch is also uh, known. This this log I have here is not quite a year old. We cut it last winter when we were cutting our firewood up at the buds, and uh, the it, the mold or the fungus gets in it very quickly. That's the only problem with birch. If birch stays moist uh, and not dry, it'll actually take on that uh, that mold really quickly. And of course, it just it gets into the wood and it actually turns it from being chippy to being mushy. So. Uh, make sure whatever yellow birch you have, you get it fairly quickly. Now this one here was right on the cusp. I can see there was a little bit of discoloration in the end. Most of it split out pretty good, but uh, some of it you can see here. If I show you this this piece, you can see the bottom of it right here, and it gets a little bit mealy down here at the bottom. So now that one there had it very uh, clearly. These other ones look pretty good. So. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take these in and I'll split up the. I've got another bolt that I'm going to split out, and then I'm going to turn them out and uh, put. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'll, I'll find a piece of steel in there and, and put the handle in that, and then try it and see how it actually works. And I think what I'll do is actually put one in my uh, training axe that I use to, to practice with here for for lumberjack sports, and see how it performs in there. So in you know to find out if it does actually uh, absorb shock as good as what my ash handles do. So anyways, that's a little bit on yellow birch. Um, very surprised this old lumberjack learned some new tricks. Um, yellow birch did show, uh, it, it performed very well in the tests as far as uh, ranking how strong they were and how elastic it is compared to the other species. It's actually quite a, quite a bit ahead of, you know, the maples and the beeches and all those. And in most tests, it was actually ahead of white ash. And it's not a ring porous hardwood, it's a diffuse porous hardwood. So. Again, the whole thing that I, I know that uh, the big test will be how well it does absorb shock when it's in a, a something like a chopping axe. So we'll do that and then in a, a couple of months or so we'll do another series, another video and say uh, how did the yellow birch perform. So anyways, that's a little bit on yellow birch from the old East Coast Lumberjack. Uh, pretty impressive and taught this old dog some new tricks.